Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Casey. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, defensive investing and just kind of give you some key takeaways um, that I was able to get uh, you know, out, out of a couple books that I've read. Uh, one of those was The uh, Intelligent Investor, um, written by Benjamin Graham. And if we go back, if, if you haven't watched it yet, um, go ahead and watch one of my previous videos that uh, I have on investing. It, it was kind of covered in my short-term approach, uh, the two different types of investing. So you had like, uh, for instance, you've got active investing and passive aggressive, uh, passive investing, not passive aggressive, but passive investing. So you got active and passive. Um, in the video though, I broke it down and in passive investing, basically um, what I was talking about was um, investing without really watching your investments, that sort of thing. Uh, there's another word for it, and it's probably a better word to use rather than passive, and that would be uh, defensive investing. All right. And so that's what I want to cover um, today is some of the key takeaways that I got from defensive investing and um, just based off my own experience so far with short-term day trading, um, you know, and taking the short-term approach versus the long-term approach, I want to cover some of, some of the observations that I've made uh, so far, you know, doing long-term investing versus the short-term and why I actually think now um, that I look back on the last year or two um, on my uh, active investing, why I think the defensive investing is probably a better way to go for most people. And some of that is because, um, you know, the returns, the returns aren't high, okay? They're not high, but you're diversified. Uh, so what I mean by that is, like, if you're an active investor... You have to constantly watch your income statements. Um, you have to somewhat know what to look for when it comes to your PE ratios to see whether or not uh, a stock is undervalued or overvalued. There is a lot of work that goes into the active investing. And most folks really just don't have the time to do that. Um, I thought I did, and I thought I was, I was smart enough to you know, make good picks and um, outperform the uh, S&P 500 market, okay? And I found out pretty quick, within two years of doing it, that, you know, I was able to make some good picks based off of what I knew, but there was a lot of uncontrollable variables um, that I was not ready for. Uh, there was really no way to protect against that kind of stuff uh, when it comes to the uncontrollable variables. Some of that I covered in my... Uh, investing 101 and, and 102 videos on the short-term approach. So if you want to know what I'm talking about, just go back and watch those. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uncontrollable variables, some things you cannot control. And uh, if you've got all your money tied up in you know one or two uh, things, like two different companies, and let's say that sector, that industry, um, you know, takes a really hard hit, uh, for example, like oil, you're going to lose a lot of money, okay? And again, the name of the game uh, throughout all these videos that I've been covering, the name of the game is to keep your money, all right? And yet the, the main goal here is to keep your money uh, and not lose it. So with defensive investing, guys, I think it's better, really, for most folks because, number one, you don't have to, to worry Um about you know an individual company going under you're diversified so uh, for instance like if you're a part of an index fund like we've talked about you own um, <clears throat> basically you're, you're becoming the market and you're owning a, the market as a whole so you're owning all the large medium and, and small sized companies that are out there so if you do have like you know in that example that example I was talking about with the oil companies um, you know, where you got all your money tied up in one company, if something like that happens, you don't have to worry because you're not fully invested in just one company, okay? You're spread out across the board. Uh, so diversification, you know, 
with being a defensive investor is not a bad thing. Now here, here's here's the downside to long-term investing, though. Okay, because I know a lot of you guys out there want to see quick returns. We all do. I mean, it's just kind of it's wired into our uh, nature, you know. As, as part, you know, it's just wired into us as being human beings. We want to see quick returns. We want to make money fast, and <laughs> with active investing and picking growth stocks, day trading, that kind of stuff, you can most certainly get higher returns doing that, but it's very risky. Okay, take it from me, you know, over the last three years, I probably lost about $7,000 of my own money just, just making stupid mistakes. Um, now, I know what I'm doing when it comes to money management, so I didn't lose all my money. I can still play the game. I've, I've been doing so and making pretty good returns. Uh, on the investments that I still have going right now, but you know, doing the growth, uh, investing, and actively trying to outperform the markets, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's damn near impossible. And I don't care how smart you are and how good of a trader you think you are. If you're watching this right now and you think you're a pro, go do a little research, okay, on the world's top hedge fund managers, and and see just how many of those people outperform the market on an annual basis. It's less than 4%. And these hedge fund managers are professional day traders, uh, professional speculators. They're people that are 10 times better doing the, you know, what it is they do than I am. Okay? And I'm talking off of, I've got at least 7 or 8 years of experience total right now. Over 10,000 hours probably of reading day in, day out, studying, stuff like that. So do the math. You know, if these guys are better than me and they can't even out outperform the market most of the time, and when they do, it's only 4% of them, that should tell you something, you know? So getting back to the defensive investing, why you should probably go with that uh, versus the active, that's just another reason why you should, okay? And the numbers are there statistically. Go do your research, you know? Um, the other thing that I like about defensive investing is like we said you want to keep your money so it protects your principal better than active investing okay and I just explained again why that is with the uh, the hedge fund managers okay <clears throat> the other cool thing I like about it still is you can still leverage uh, compounding so you can put this thing on autopilot and you can still get your returns all right. Even though your returns are not going to be as high, we're talking maybe in between five and nine percent annually. Um, you can still get that that return reinvested, so that it's compounding for you over time. Okay, so you're still going to get some some uh, good returns out of this. Your money's going to grow. All right. And the other key takeaway that I've that I took out of uh, the intelligent investor, um, Benjamin Graham was really he really emphasized this a lot in his book. Um, not to mention a lot of the, uh, the people that Tony Robbins talked to in his book as well. And, you know, there's, there's a few others out there like written by Warren Buffett. Um, all of them were saying the same thing in their books. And that is, you know, you, you want to trade less. And when you trade less, you're keeping more uh, of your money and you're also earning more. Okay. And I can, you know, I can vouch for this because... Just over the past two years, like I was saying, I was doing a lot of day trading with ETFs and stuff like that. You know, the more I trade, the more trades I put in, um, the higher the odds were that eventually I was going to end up making a mistake and lose. And that's exactly what happened. You know, I, I couldn't predict the markets. I made a, a bad timing error when it came to jumping into the markets. I got in, uh, you know, one time, one point in time, I got in like a couple days before... The stock market took a 1,000 point drop, and I was betting the markets were still going to go up. I ended up losing $2,000 uh, within two days. $2,000. That was a $2,000 mistake that I made. Okay, and it was because I was trading more and more and more because I had a 92% win rate on my uh, on my day trading. So I, th I was starting to get this ego. And those are things that you will encounter. Those are errors that you want to stay away from. Um, the best way to do it is to stop doing that short-term approach, you know, while you don't 
necessarily have the money to cover that kind of loss or those are you know losses you don't want to take um, while you're still trying to uh, grow your nest egg basket for retirement you want to stay away from it and go with the defensive investing okay so those are just some things to think about um, <clears throat> and I wanted to share why I thought that the defensive investing is at this point a much better way for folks to go um, rather than the active investing you know so once you get the defensive investing and your security bucket covered uh, which would be basically the, uh, the amount of money that you're going to need to survive uh, and keep the income coming in after you quit a job and you know have all your bills paid for and covered uh, that would be a security bucket once you have that initial mass investment uh, you know working for you which would be in your defensive investing plan then you can look at the growth investing then you can look at the uh, the active investing with extra money that you might be making okay because then you can afford to lose it you don't have to worry about you know holding on to it saying oh I need I need this much money so that I can pay my bills you don't even have to worry about that anymore okay and that's the biggest difference between being a de uh, defensive investor investor and an active investor all right so I just wanted to clarify that a little bit more for you so you have a better understanding of why I think this is the better uh, direction to go all right um, I'm gonna be putting together some more videos for you guys on the uh, the long-term approach so here pretty soon I'll be making a few videos on uh, you know rebalancing the portfolio I'm looking at some notes here uh, so excuse me for looking down uh, I'm not making much eye contact here um, so I'll make a, a video on rebalancing a portfolio I'm also going to cover uh, dollar cost averaging on, you know, returns being reinvested and why that's a really good thing uh, because it, it leads to, you know, higher returns over time. Uh, I'll, I'll make a couple more videos too on, uh, you know, looking at div dividend investing <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, reading a company's income statements, okay, because those are very important things as well um, especially when it comes to you know once you've got this covered and you let's say you want to do some growth investing um, you're going to know what to look for okay so stay tuned um, you know when I, I want to say thank you again for watching and uh, you know watch for some of these these other videos I'm going to be putting out because guys you earn what you learn okay like Warren Buffett said you earn what you learn uh, knowledge, it is power, but it's the applied knowledge that's power. Okay, so if you start applying some of the stuff that I'm showing you through your own um, investment ventures, you're going to find out that what I'm saying and a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you in these videos, it's it's true, it's legitimate, and it actually works. Okay, so I'll uh, talk to you guys here soon, and have a nice day.